please take your seats for Grierson 2022, the British Documentary Awards in association with all three media. Please welcome the chair of the Grierson Trust, Lorraine Hegacy. Well, what an amazing VT showcasing so many wonderful programs. And it is indeed wonderful to be here tonight welcoming you to the 50th British Documentary Awards and our golden anniversary celebration for the Grayson Trust. 50, yes. <laughs> 50 incredible years of recognizing and rewarding the brilliance of the documentary form and the talented community that make so many amazing films. That's all of you here in this room tonight and many, many more besides. And there is plenty to celebrate. We have got such a fabulous evening ahead with highlights from the best documentaries of the past year, including, I'm glad to say, the return of the best cinema category following a hiatus due to the pandemic. 
Well, as the nominations show, the documentary is stronger than ever, bringing a wide range of compelling stories into focus, embraced by traditional broadcasters and streamers alike. Alongside the genre-based categories, we also have two special awards. Hero of the Year recognizes the invaluable contribution made by someone who works tirelessly behind the scenes. Believe it or not, when I started my career some 40 years ago, I was part of a diversity drive, as the BBC was aiming to broaden its intake of news trainees. They were no longer going to be almost exclusively public school, almost exclusively Oxbridge, and almost exclusively male. They were even going to accept someone like me, who was none of those things. So it's disappointing that we still have so far to go and that many women in our industry are not getting the pay, recognition, or opportunities they deserve. And it's a huge, huge tribute to Claire Richards, this year's hero, and to the team at We Are Dot Women. And to the team at We Are Dot Women and Claire, that they're trying to redress this balance through their 50-50 pledge and other work. Now, I know many of the organizations and production companies in this room have already signed up to this. And if you haven't, what's stopping you? Our Grierson Trustees Award goes to a titan of the industry, somebody who's made an outstanding contribution in the documentary field. For the first time, we have awarded this posthumously because we wanted to recognize that exceptional and incredibly talented documentary maker, Roger Grafe, a legend and an inspiration to so many in the documentary community, myself included. I have so appreciated his support at various stages of my career. I've so appreciated Roger's support, really whatever I was doing and his advice. Um, I think we'll all miss him because we're so used to seeing him on occasions like this. Of course, we wouldn't be here tonight without the support of all our sponsors, especially our headline sponsor, All3 Media. Welcome to those sponsoring for the first time. We hope to see you back next year. And to our long-standing sponsors, we are so grateful for your loyal and consistent patronage, which enables us to put on these awards, as well as supporting the year-round work of the Grierson Trust. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. And I think you all deserve a round of applause too. <laughs> Thanks too to our category chairs, reviewers and judges for their conscientious and spirited consideration of the entries. Grierson juries are never dull. And of course I must also thank all the trustees for the many ways in which they support our awards and training schemes and for giving their time and wisdom so generously. In addition to celebrating excellence across all genre of documentary, the Trust offers training to those who might otherwise find it challenging to get into our industry. Our Grierson Doc Lab scheme is celebrating its 10th anniversary this year, and thanks to generous support from Netflix, we've been able to expand Doc Lab into two new areas where there's a real shortage of skills, editing and production management. I'm proud to say that over 150 people have graduated across all three schemes and are now working in the industry. And many of this year's Doc Labbers are here tonight. They're all wearing silver badges, so you can easily spot them at the after party. I recommend that you get to know them and sign them up quickly before one of your competitors snaps them up. Our thanks to each and every one of our Doc Lab sponsors and partners, as well as to the Indies, who provide practical opportunities for the trainees, and to those who volunteer as mentors, your support is invaluable to us, and we really couldn't run these schemes without you. Last, but by no means least, I and my fellow trustees would like to thank the small team of staff and freelancers at the Grierson Trust. And we really do have a small team. I'm talking about three full-time employees. Every year, I'm amazed at what they pull off, and they do it with such enthusiasm and dedication. It makes our job easy, and working with them, such a pleasure. So tonight, I have to confess to feeling rather emotional, not just because it's our special 50th anniversary awards, but because we're saying goodbye to a Grierson legend, Jane Callahan, our managing director of 20 years, 
who is retiring. Jane, Jane, we are so indebted to you for your long and committed service. You've grown the work of the Trust beyond recognition, even during the time that I've been here, and you've consistently expanded and involved the awards and our Doc Lab training programs, which have enabled us to have far-reaching impact on the sector. And I'd like you to come up to the stage, Jane, because you really, tonight, you always stay in the background. Tonight, you're going to take a bow. today, so we're going to sing. Are we going to sing? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to Jane. Happy birthday to She'll kill me afterwards. We will, of course, miss Jane hugely, but with her usual efficiency, she has helped us to find a brilliant successor, and we're delighted to welcome Sylvia Bednarts as our new managing director. Many of you will know Sylvia from the Sheffield Doc Fest. So many of you will know her from the Doc Fest, where she was the director of partnerships and operations. Now it's time to get on with the show. Have a wonderful evening, and make sure you raise a glass in the bar later to toast 50 amazing years of the Grayersons. So tonight, we've got not one host for the awards, but two. And before I welcome them on stage, let's just take a look at them in action so that you realize what might be in store for you tonight. And then you roll it round, and you look to see if there's legs on the whiskey to see the strength. Right. Okay, get on. What I like. So you tip it like that, and then you're looking for a line. Once again, you everything about Alice. <laughs> <laughs> get your nose in. But then take it away, yeah. Take it away. Oh, what? Because you'll burn your nose. I don't remember anything. Is it vanilla, biscuits, fruits? Oh. Grass. I actually feel like I remember quite a bit. Sausage rolls. Oh. Sausage rolls? Yeah, sausage rolls. Keep it in your mouth. You swallow, don't you? <laughs> if you swallow it, your mouth just go like that. <laughs> you might as well just drink nothing. No, everyone start chucking whiskey okay. around. <laughs> We've tried to keep the whiskey out of the dressing room tonight, but who knows whether they snuck a little bit in. Please join me in welcoming the incomparable Rosie Jones and AJ Adudu. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. <laughs> oh, my God, it is so great to be here. It certainly is. It certainly is. Thank you all. A very warm welcome to the Grayson Awards 2022. <laughs> oh, my bloody God. <laughs> It is such an honour to be hosting tonight with my dear friend and stone cold legend, <laughs> AJ! <laughs> you charmer. <laughs> you absolute charmer, thank you. <laughs> and please give it up for the person who looks like an angel but has the mouth of a 60-year-old sailor. Rosie Jones, everyone. Oh, what do you fucking mean? 
<laughs> Do you know what I mean? She's already started. Me and Rosie are both thrilled to host tonight's awards because, you know, me, because I've always been in awe of how documentary makers share such powerful stories with the potential to genuinely change the world. And Rosie, because, you know, free bar. Exactly. <laughs> Exactly. Say me a me. I'm already assholes. <laughs> but you can't even tell. <laughs> <laughs> no, I am so excited to be because when I got a red eye up from being on all the TV. Um, I watch TV and oh my God, do I love a documentary. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> well, what's the best documentary you've watched this year? Oh, there have been a lot, but I'd say... Um, would start 99. Oh, God, yeah. That was so horrendous, wasn't it? Oh, uh, no. I, I wish I had been there. <laughs> because I would have been the first one naked. <laughs> she went in from the cigar <laughs> pudding, <laughs> which is actually... How will end the evening? <laughs> <laughs> You've been warned, everyone. <laughs> Nudity is in store. <laughs> and I won't lie, being in a room full of documentary makers, it's quite intimidating. I mean, we're very much like the naughty school kids at the back of class, aren't we? No. <laughs> Speak for yourself. I'm very high, bro. Wow. Really? Yeah, yeah. Every time I go into Greg's, <laughs> I put my pinky out. <laughs> it's giving class. Yeah. Very, very highbrow. Me and Rosie are here to keep the show going, believe it or not. Uh, we are all that stands between a night of order and a night of chaos. Way! <laughs> Let the chaos begin! No! <laughs> No, Rosie, we're supposed to be the ones bringing order. Oh! I know, oh, I know. But I'm going to say right here, right now, it's a long ceremony, so at some point I'm going to need a wee. <laughs> <laughs> Thank and you for letting me know. Listen, I've got a bottle for you down there. Yeah. You're good to go. I'll, I'll be squatting <laughs> at some point. <laughs> so you've all got that to look forward to. Right, that's enough from us. Partly because we've got to crack on with the show and partly because if Rosie says anything else, the lawyers might actually start openly crying. Yeah. So let's get the main event underway. Our first award this evening is for Best Entertaining Documentary, sponsored by Prime Video. And we know a lot about entertaining, don't we, Rosie? Oh, God, we do, I Jay. I... I would literally do anything in the name of entertainment. <laughs> it, uh, even that. <laughs> <laughs> Cheeky. <laughs> Please welcome apprentice star and business guru, Tim Campbell, with Prime Videos, Fuzzy Khan. <laughs> Go on then. Shall we have a look at the nominations? Really good, Rosie. Yeah. Let's take a look at the nominations. Yeah, I'm getting stiff now. Let's go. Let's just do something. This is Joan Collins is a candid exploration of the extraordinary life of a Hollywood star with Joan herself narrating, writing and rewriting her story along the way. 
I made my own money, and I lived by my own rules. So after my divorce, I lived with several men. And after my divorce, after my divorce, I did what I liked. I did what I liked. Is that because no, several men sounds like several men all at once? Is that's why? Yes, <laughs> which was not true. <laughs> A North Idaho neighborhood is turned upside down in Twas the Fight Before Christmas. As one man's obsession to throw a huge Christmas event escalates into all-out war. My first thought was, we need to make it bigger. And that's when I remembered that I knew a lady who had a camel. Ideas just kept piling in. He doesn't know when to stop. Come on. We had Christmas lights, hot chocolate, cotton candy, Santa Claus, the camel, a 35-person choir. The thing took on a life of its own. The Tinder swindler charts the hunt for a notorious con man who used a dating app to live a life of luxury while defrauding women across Europe. I saw that this girl, Cecilia, met him on Tinder. I also met him on Tinder. He also took me to a five-star hotel on the first date. Band, the Mary Whitehouse story, examines how a Midlands housewife, armed with a typewriter, went to war with what she considered to be the filth she saw on film and TV. We saw a programme that started at 6.35. And it was the dirtiest program that I have seen for a very long time. It's obvious that Mary had found what she wanted to do in the Clean Up TV organisation from, from the beginning. There were a few sort of people that had famous relatives and like old colonels and people that thought they were very important. And Mary just basically swept them aside with as much ruthlessness as she needed and took something like absolute power. As the father of a beautiful daughter, it's wonderful to see such a short list of all female directors. The jury said that their films. <laughs> I've been a bit left out here, but let me carry on going. The jury said that all their films had genuine laugh out loud moments. The winning film was hilarious and shocking, but delivers a serious message about differences and tolerance. As the director's feature debut, it's a fantastic achievement. Fozia, tell us who the award goes to. The Grierson Award for the Prime Video Best Entertaining Documentary goes to Twas the Fight Before Christmas. <laughs> on stage, the film's director, Becky Reed, with members of the production team. terrifying to go first. Um, I know we're not supposed to spend ages saying thank you, so I'll just collectively say thank you to everyone. You all know who you are, who helped so much on this film. Um, I had a really great time making this, for the most part. Um, <laughs> um, making a documentary about a very litigious um, Christian nationalist who shouts culture war at the drop of a hat is terrifying. Um, one of the fun things, I suppose, about one of our reviews was actually that the, the reviewer just said, don't watch it. Um, so, so I don't know if that's a good review or a bad review, but um, 
Yeah, anxiety was definitely something that I think we all felt dealing with Jeremy, um, who hasn't yet sued us, but we are waiting <laughs> <laughs> nervously. Um, but actually, once we got to know Jeremy, um, filming with him, the whole project took on another level of anxiety, which was what he might do to create chaos around everything all the time. Some of those things were, I think, the first day we showed up to do his master interview, he'd taken all the carpet out of his entire house. And it was a building site, and any space that we could have feasibly done his interview was now full of floorboards, which the whole crew had to spend at least three hours moving. Uh, another day, we turned up to film with him, and he'd driven for three days non-stop to LA to buy a piano so we could film him playing it, which we didn't. Um, <laughs> Um, another time, he was really upset that his car was too dirty to be on camera, um, and he'd bought a Christmas tree for his family and put it on the roof, so then he drove it through the car wash with a Christmas tree on top, so that was also nice. So yeah, he was, he was a real um, absolutely bonkers contributor to work with, but um, I just want to thank the two producers of the film who aren't here as well for keeping me mostly sane and keeping all of our stress levels relatively low-ish um, throughout the process. And thanks, Grierson, because this is really wonderful. We're all really thrilled. Thanks. Oh, brilliant! Imagine going through a car wash yeah. with a Christmas tree on top. It sounds really fun! <laughs> yeah, we're trying! Let's do it this Christmas! Yeah. <laughs> Right, next up, Will Crown Best Music Documentary, supported by Sky Documentaries. Are you very musical, was it? Well, I did perform opera earlier on this year for comic relief. All right, all right. Were you any, uh, were you any good? No. <laughs> I was absolutely shocked. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even bloody talk. <laughs> There's a lot of people sat like, going, can you laugh at that? Yeah, you can. <laughs> well, to present the award, please welcome the Queen of Radio One. It's the fabulous Vic Hope. <laughs> Music, culture, and fashion. In my generation, say it looks nice. The older generation thinks it's ridiculous. The three of us, me, Yvonne, and Cleedy, we all had our natural dues. We couldn't wait to get our hair nappy. Black people who, unfortunately, was born in this country are trying to establish our identity. This is just about all we have left to identify ourselves as. That festival. Born in the different cultures, Caribbean, Afrocentric, all the Latin and Cuban. Filmed over two decades, Genius, a Kanye trilogy, charts the rise and rise of Kanye West's career. Most people just saw Kanye as a young producer who can hook him up with cheap beats. Keep preaching till I reach him. Maybe you the next Jay-Z and I'm just sleeping. But he told me, the only reason why he made beats was so that he can rap over them. We have filmed a lot of artists, but there was just something different about Kanye. Other Like Me, the oral history of coom transmissions and throbbing gristle is an account of a collective of misfit artists who used performance and music to deal openly with themes such as sex, pornography, and violence. There was nothing like it in Hull, totally nothing like it. We'd go out on the streets on the main shopping area, dressed up in really vibrant colours, and do bizarre little Dada surrealist actions. 
Les said to me at one point, and people come to say, well, what does it mean? Is it doesn't need to mean anything. It just is. The story of two friends who went from selling bootleg merch to building a sprawling media empire. Dawn Raid puts Kiwi and Polynesian hip hop on the map. We wanted to build Dawn Raid because we knew what was here. We were watching hip hop labels in America who had a stable of artists. The goal was always building a stable of artists. Finding these young people, give them the opportunity and give them a platform. What a selection, what a lineup. Just seeing all of those documentaries together there, they're so evocative and so invigorating and it's so exciting. But the winning filmmakers took the viewers on a deeply personal journey, witnessing the self-belief, the self-sabotage, and even the self-delusion it takes to make it firsthand in the industry of music. <coughs> Definitely stitching together knockbacks and triumphs, the documentary told a story of genius on the rise. So the Grierson Award for the Sky Documentary's best music documentary goes to Genius. A cameo trilogy at one. Vision. This is, uh, this is really amazing. Um, it was the grace of God that got us through this, you know. So the first person I have to thank is my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We actually set, accepting this award for Jesus, you know what I'm saying? I got to say that because, like I said, it was the grace of God and, and everything that God put around us from J. Ivey to Chike to Netflix to the Gerson Awards. I just want to thank everybody, Chike, what you got. I mean, you know, definitely it's not us. We're here to, to accept this award, but there's so much of a village around us to help us bring this project to life. But I just got to say it's amazing to see so many people who are truly humbled to receive this award. Our peers here that are all gathered around just the celebration of do documentary in such a niche um, art form. And so it's just amazing. And, and man, this room is just amazing. The love and... and I feel in this room is amazing. Oh, so thank you, thank you, London. Thank you, Grierson's, for, for honoring us today. With this. And this Jay Ivey who wrote my narration, which I ain't think I did good, but it's you did guy. good. <laughs> What's up, London? How y'all feeling? Uh, I just want to say one thank you so very much for this honor. Uh, our stories, our stories are the key to our freedom. So for you all to recognize this this story of love and faith that means so much. Love is the key, love is the answer, and we don't take any of these moments for granted, so thank you, London, thank you so much. Wow, amazing. Now we move on to Best Constructed Documentary Series sponsored by Channel 4, and to announce the recipient, please welcome Paralympic medal winner and Strictly superstar. It's the fabulous Ellie Simmons along with her Strictly dance partner, Nikita Kuzmi. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Sorry. Oh yeah, there you go. Yeah. Oh. yeah. So yeah, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening. Yeah. So Nikita, they've put us far apart now. I know we got eliminated on Sunday night. Oh. Yeah, I know, guys. I know else. Yes, yeah, they put us far apart, but we're still gonna do things together. I mean, we went skydiving yesterday. Yeah, Come we on. Did. We went skydiving yesterday. And we're still gonna do way more things together. But let's make sure of one thing. Let's not do the Charleston anymore, shall no, we? No, we're never ever doing the Charleston ever again. <laughs> Guys, do you want to have a preview of what next week's dance was supposed to look like? Yes. Show them. Yeah, Come on, Elf. Put it on. That's what it was going to be. 
Okay, okay. Should okay, we let's, back to the awards yeah, now? Let's do back yeah. to the awards. You've yeah. seen the preview of what it would have been if people would have voted for us. Yeah, just saying. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Six black Britons from very different backgrounds come together in We Are Black and British as each person shares a deeply personal story to reveal their perspective to the group. Hakim, why have you been arrested? He then says, because they found a lock knife in his bag. A lock knife? The lock knife for your work. It's got the, the logo on it, it's for work. My son had on the full work attire. He had on the boots, he had on the trousers, he had on the t-shirt, he had on the jacket. What do you think he's gonna be doing at 7 a.m. in the morning? He's on his way to work. At this time, I'm vexed, like, I'm mad. I said to the police officer, you've arrested a victim and you've now made him a perpetrator. 10 aspiring makeup artists battle it out in Glow Up, Britain's next makeup star, as contestants showcase their skills and artistry to produce jaw-dropping transformations. When it comes to makeup, it has definitely changed the way I express myself. The style that I'm best at is dramatic. It gives me the opportunity to be weird and go like the level that I know that I can go. I look in the mirror, I'm like, oh, you are the baddest bee on earth, honey. You are a force to be reckoned with. The Doghouse takes us behind the scenes at an animal charity where abandoned dogs are paired with potential owners. She will naturally go to the person who is more comfortable and more confident with her, and I think that's what's happening at the minute. Who's that? <laughs> Hi, there we go. Are you ticklish, brother? Are you ticklish? That big grin that she has gone. Yeah, I know. The excitement's kind yeah, of left her a little it has. bit. <laughs> Do you think she likes us? Do you think she likes us? Oh. Idris Elba's Fight School takes eight struggling young people and gives them intensive boxing training in the hope that discipline, commitment, and focus will transform their lives. Not a lot of people think you're going to make anything. So from then, a lot of people. They write you off. So I want to prove to them and myself that I can do something. I'm not just a delinquent. <laughs> we had people that said they weren't going to do it. There were people that are fearful of the water. There are people that have got ailments that getting in the water didn't make no sense. And everyone did it. Everyone jumped in, man. And that's amazing. Well done, man. <laughs> The judges were wowed by the incre incredibly in inventive format, allowing characters to share deeply personal stories and providing a valuable forum for debates about insufficiently explored issues. The Grayson Award for the Channel 4 Best Constructed Documentary Series goes to We Are Black and British. Narinda Minus and the production team. Nobody do. Well, thank you. Thank you, Grace and Trust. Amazing, amazing. It had all the magic ingredients, really. A perfect team. Um, just incredible people, actually. And the casting, I'm sorry, but most shows, the best shows, are, are brilliantly cast. 
a jest. She was outstanding, outstanding, outstanding. And of course, the whole thing is put together by a fab series producer. And last but not least, can I just say something about production management, line producing? Seriously, they are to be totally valued, actually. And we've got one of the best here. Really one of the best. Um, But just a quick special thanks to Jan, the commissioning editor. Without him, this wouldn't have happened. Um, the OU, um, I thought they were fantastic, actually. I mean, I know sometimes people dread working with the OU, but on this occasion, the academics were superb. And of course, the six people that actually took part. And thank you, the cast, actually, for sharing their incredible stories. Thank you. Next, we have Best Current Affairs Documentary, sponsored by Televisual Magazine. Now, I know you, Rosie, but I don't know if you keep up to date with current affairs, do you? Well, um, I try to, I really try, but right now, it's, it's a bit depressing. Yeah. Like the current government contains more pricks <laughs> than the <a> needle factory. <laughs> You're not wrong. <laughs> Honestly, after I watched the news, I got to cheer myself up by watching a documentary about murder. <laughs> <laughs> to announce this year's recipient, please welcome Televisual's factual editor, Pippa Condestine, and with her is broadcaster and psychologist, Dr. Sean Williams. <laughs> Afghanistan, no country for women, goes undercover to document life under Taliban rule and records the dire consequences for those brave enough to speak out for their rights. Around 40 women were huddled in a courtyard. They were the missing women we'd been looking for. Salam. Shoma, ki shoma ra gerefte, ke gerefte, baraya chi che jormi? Ha? Black Axe follows journalist Peter McJob as he returns to Nigeria to come face to face with the violent mafia group responsible for a reign of terror that has claimed thousands of innocent lives. In your days as a member, what was your role? I was a butcher, and I became a chairman. What was the job as a butcher? to eliminate, to defend the organization and every member of the organization, and to eliminate any identified intruder. With remarkable access to the Russian opposition leader, Navalny follows the extraordinary investigation to identify the men who poisoned him. Мне нужно один абзац. Просто краткое понимание от членов команды, что у нас пошло не так, почему в Томске был с Навальным полный провал. Ну, вот это вот я вопрос себе задавал уже не один раз, кстати. Ну, я оцениваю работу хорошую, по крайней мере, ну, работа сделала как бы, ну, как, как вот делали, как бы, мы этим все прорабатывалось вопрос. И не один раз. Piecing together the day that pro-Trump protesters broke into the Senate, four hours at the Capitol uncovers the more unusual stories from a day that shook US democracy. I was looking in my fanny pack and I realized I had seven joints. And I looked around, I said, do you smoke? Do you smoke? Do you smoke? 
You guys want to? You guys want to smoke? And they're like, yeah. Need some? How come you're smoking weed in the uh, Capitol? Because I can. What what strain is that? What strain of weed is that? Yes, Pinkberry. All very powerful and important documentaries. The winning film is gripping. It had great access in incredibly difficult circumstances, demonstrating real empathy and skill. The makers deserve praise for an illuminating film. And importantly, the women who participated and who are still living that life deserve recognition. Pippa, tell us who the award goes to. Uh, the Grierson Award for the Televisual Best Current Affairs Documentary goes to Exposure. Afghanistan, no country for women. Please welcome on stage under government order the leader now and members of the production team. so much. I'm suddenly as nervous as I was when I was secretly filming in that prison. So forgive me for my shaky voice. Um, I don't usually stick to rules, but I will this time and stick to the instructions not to thank uh, everyone we need to thank. Uh, actually, I'm going to lie. It's going to mostly be the Afghan team, who we can't name. Um, I'm going to keep this short and sweet. We filmed with this amazing young Afghan women's rights activist. And Kareem and I, amazing Kareem. Um, Kareem and I have been doing this a long time, and we both agree, didn't we, that she's one of the bravest, most inspiring people we have ever met. And she asked me to read this message to you. Shit, I forgot my glasses. <laughs> Bear with me, <laughs> sorry. This is how old I am. The world should know that Afghan women have been forgotten. The last year has been one of torture and oppression, and it's happened right in front of the eyes of the international community and the United Nations. America and NATO handed us Afghans over to the Taliban terrorist group when they withdrew. The UN has turned a blind eye to the Taliban's crimes against women and the people of Afghanistan. Despite our disappointment, once again, we ask the world, we ask you not to ignore the suffering of the Afghan people. We Afghan women are the soldiers of freedom and democracy. This is my message to you. Support the women of Afghanistan. Tomorrow will be too late. With respect, RFF Fatemi. Thank you. Next, we have the award for Best Arts Documentary. I'm going to ask you again, Rosie. How cultured are you? Baby! <laughs> Sometimes. Oh, oh, no, I got it. Sometimes. I even listen to classical music <laughs> whilst eating a kebab. <laughs> In my pants. <laughs> okay, so very cultured. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so to present it, please welcome to the stage broadcaster and columnist Katie Putvik. <laughs> Let's see the nominated films.
Hello, cutie. Looking back over a sparkling 70-year career, Rita Moreno, just a girl who decided to go for it, highlights the talent and resilience of the Latina actor as she broke barriers in Hollywood. Have you ever been so obsessed by somebody that you feel as if you can't breathe without them? <laughs> That's how Marlon felt about himself. You know, I, I think of it now, and I think, what was to love? But there were certain things that just thrilled me. The fact that he was, in fact, ungettable. Performance artist Selena Thompson travels on a cargo ship to retrace the route of the Atlantic slave trade in Salt, a deeply personal navigation of history and collective memory. Carrying the weight of 400 years of slavery and its contentious afterlife, I was filled with rage and grief, and I had to do something. So, I decided to go on a pilgrimage, a journey across three continents to find some peace or a way to live, to soothe something that was raging within me. Taking passages from the artist's memoirs as source material, the Andy Warhol Diaries investigates Warhol's inner life. And I was curious to see if people were still recognizing me all the time from the 2020 TV show, but they weren't. So this means that TV makes you famous for one day, and then it fades. I must be too weird for TV, because it's always the same thing. And it's scary, because they use you up. Reviewing cinematic innovation from the past two decades, the story of film, A New Generation, explores the movies from around the globe that have gifted us new ways of seeing. More people are making movies, more types of people with more points of view. These are our habitats, we creatures of the dark. These are the places where our lives are relit. The winning film takes viewers on a deeply personal journey. It's a story about grief and collective memory told in an original way. It was intensely sad, but in places darkly comic. The judges were captivated by it. The recipient of the Grierson Award for Best Arts Documentary is Salt by Selena Thompson. <laughs> that um, and and really we're, we're very um, sorry that, that Selena herself can't can't be here she's on a residency for, for her next project she's a very hard-working artist um, but we were so proud to have been able to tell to tell her story and make her play into a film and it's thanks to the hard work of Alison the director <laughs> And also Denise, our, our edit producer, who brought this, this vision to life. And, and, and we were told to tell a funny story about making it. Well, we made this at the height of lockdown, when with and, and Selena um, has a disability, she's very vulnerable, and so we had to take an unbelievable amount of care to look after her and everybody else on the, on the crew. 
and, and this team of amazing women really, really got through a very, very difficult shoot and created something very, very powerful. Thank you. I'd just like to add to that. Um, I, think, I know we're not really supposed to do this, but um, Katia Bingham Walker, our amazing PM, and uh, Damien Paul Daniel, who was the uh, DOP, um, they were just an amazing team. So thank you. And thank you to the judges as well for, I know the afterlife of slavery and colonialism is not an easy subject. Um, so, especially in an arts category, um, and it's something that we should all um, recognise. So, yeah, thank you to the judges as well. Amazing, no, it's that all the winners are sat at the back. <laughs> So if you're on the back row, get ready! <laughs> <laughs> so, as well as it being the 50th anniversary of the Grayson Awards, we are also celebrating a decade of Doc Lab, the Grayson Trust training and mentoring scheme. And what started as a new entry scheme for eight aspiring filmmakers back in 2012 has developed into three programmes helping to bring people from underrepresented groups into the factual TV industry. And 10 years on, and over 150 people have graduated from Dot Club, and now they are flourishing. So let's hear from some of them. I did the scheme nearly 10 years ago now and um, I cannot fully express the impact it's had on my career. Hi. How are you doing? Good, very well, but thank you for joining us. Yeah, it's like a little window of, of smiling faces. Doing Doc Lab was the best thing I've ever done with my life and I could never have envisioned where it would take me. It was the most comprehensive, most detailed crash course I've ever done in my life. It was an all-encompassing introduction to the industry. It just seemed like this really energetic and like bright way of just demystifying the documentary industry. And I just really loved that it was centered around people who couldn't typically have a route into TV. The Doc Lab allowed me to have confidence in myself and my abilities. I wouldn't have a career today if it wasn't for the Grayson Trust. I work at a television centre in White City and I'm an assistant producer. I'm still kind of a minority as a northerner and, and as a disabled person here. You know, if, if it weren't for the Grayson Trust, to get my foot in the door and be able to be here, I, I, I wouldn't be here, I can say that for a fact. I'm an Iraqi Kurd from uh, South Kurdistan. I uh, volunteer with the London Kurdish Film Festival and it's important that we bring forward as many people from different backgrounds as possible. It's thanks to the Grayson Trust who are championing that diversity that we get more and more people in the field. After Doc Lab being introduced to all these amazing people, being able to put Grayson on my CV, things have just rocketed um, and it's such a turnaround from thinking I'd never actually be able to make editing my full-time career and now it is. In terms of disability, I feel like there's a real commitment to making television more accessible. There's a real want at the moment for authentic voices. You know, quite a few people on my team on, on the programme I'm making about autism are autistic. And it's really important for us to do that because that makes it a genuine programme that's in the best interest of autistic people. The engagement for digital is through the roof. You get the privilege of seeing someone say, this person actually impacted and changed my life and that to me is why I love working in digital. To every underrepresented group that the film speaks to directly and indirectly, this is for us man, all the outsiders, all the people that's been told you're not good enough, like, this is for us. The Grayson Award, best science documentary, goes to Locked In, Breaking the Silence. Please welcome on stage, producer Poppy Goodhart. It was really great to be at the Grayson having started on the Grayson Doc Lab and, and not knowing whether or not I would have got into telly were it not for that. Time now for 
our best sports documentary, sponsored by Red Bull Studios. So what's your favourite sports documentary? Uh. <laughs> oh, no, I like the one about basketball. Oh, yeah, 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 I loved that, The Last Dance. That was amazing. No, Base Jam. <laughs> it's not a documentary. It's not a documentary. <laughs> to tell us about this year's recipient, please welcome Red Bull Studios, Bernadette McDane, and with her is documentary presenter and broadcaster Antoine Allen. <laughs> Citizen Ash is a powerful portrait of champion tennis player turned activist Arthur Ash, told by those close to him and the man himself. Some people say that my notion or feelings of self-sufficiency go too far. I think I can almost withstand just about anything. As an African-American athlete, I have experienced racism as a tennis player going way back. I have played extraordinary matches under unbelievable circumstances. But Wimbledon tied my whole life together. The career and life of Paul Gascoigne are laid bare in Gaza, a chronicle of a footballer's rise to fame and the accompanying pressure of being in the public eye. He would always check doors umpteen times. But again, had no idea that it was a condition. I just thought it was, it was Paul. Why would you question him? He was the best player on the planet, bar none. 14 Peaks, Nothing is Impossible, follows Nepali mountaineer Nimsdai Purja as he embarks on a quest to summit all of the world's 8,000 meter peaks in just seven months. <laughs> Today is uh, snowing quite heavily, so I just made the call that we're going to camp up here. If the weather clears up, we're going to go head up. King Shaparwal. Very typical. Gold Rush, our race to Olympic glory, examines how Britain turned its sporting reputation around to triumph at London 2012. And Kelly Holmes, what a brave run. She's taking it on, and Kelly Holmes leading down the... And I was actually leading, like, by a lot, <laughs> coming into the home straight and off of the home straight. I looked up at the screen, and I actually, at that point, almost couldn't believe I was in front. Wasn't even running six weeks before this Olympic Games. I'm now leading the Olympic final home straight. The award goes to an engaging film which tells the story of a quiet hero, showcasing the physical impact of competing at such a high level. We learn a lot about his hidden depths, his passion for his sport, and his activism. Bernadette, please tell us who the award goes to. The Grierson Award for Red Bull Studios Best Sports Documentary goes to Citizen Ash. Please welcome the stage, producer Beth Hubbard.
Okay, that's the funniest thing that ever happened on this movie. Me taking my shoes off. I wasn't gonna fall on my ass in front of London. <laughs> Arthur said, true heroism is sober and undramatic. It is not the urge to surpass all others at whatever cost, but the urge to serve all others at whatever cost. From truly humble beginnings in Richmond, Virginia, Arthur was raised by a loving and very conservative disciplinarian, Arthur Ashe Sr. His father's disciplinarian approach was to protect him as a young black man living in a very prejudiced white society. Dr. Johnson, his second mentor, continued the conditioning by telling author, Arthur, even if the ball lands outside the line and they call it, you say nothing. This was to keep him competing as the only black tennis player in a game that was all white, down to the shorts and the tennis shoes. As Arthur matured both on and off the court, he felt self-loathing for not activating sooner against the oppression of black people in the United States. After the brutal murder of Emmett Till and the assassination of Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King and President Robert Kennedy, Arthur began to speak out. And after he won the US Open, folks began to listen. Throughout his life, he evolved and changed as he worked for freedom in South Africa and the rights for those with HIV. Arthur was a listener. He would walk up and listen to those on every side of every issue. This gave him the power to bring people together, the power of actual inclusion. He never stopped marching, advocating, and being of service until he passed in 1993. As someone who was born the daughter of an advocate, as a mother of two black young men, Arthur has given me hope that there is real, real hope in this very divided time. Service to another and listening to others is what he stood for, and it's a large part of the answer, he said. Through the 250,000 young men and women that attend the Arthur Ashe tennis camps in the US and the Arthur Ashe Foundations, Arthur's legacy lives on. I'd like to thank the Grierson Trust for recognizing this elegant film about an elegant man, directed by Sam Pollard and Rex Miller. I would like to thank CNN Films, Amy Entelis, Courtney Sexton, and Alex Hannibal. HBO Max and all our incredible executive producers. This film took six years to make. But most of all, I'd like to thank Dog Wolf. Without Anna Godas and her belief in this movie, we would not be here tonight. And thank you, Arthur. Thank you so much for allowing us to carry your message forward. I must have a new pair of shoes, then. <laughs> yeah, we've already picked up some glasses. Yeah, we're smashing it so far. We're cleaning up. We'll have an old outfit by the end of the day. <laughs> right. Our next award recognises presenters who bring originality, insight and perspective to the subject. All right, Rosie. Uh, what? What's up? I'm not nominated. <laughs> no, no, it's not all that. <laughs> Firstly, you haven't presented a documentary. And secondly, can you honestly say that you, Rosie Jones, brings originality, insight and perspective to a subject? Really? When we filmed your travel show, you got so smashed on whiskey, I had to put you to bed. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, point taken. Shall we make some proper professionals while I get a whiskey? 
Great idea. To crown our best documentary presenter, please welcome the winner of this award last year, the ridiculously talented Yinka Bikini. The nomination. Satnam Sangera explores how our colonial history and relationship with empire is at the root of much of modern Britain in Empire State of Mind. Anok Lal, Shankar Singh, Bhag Singh. You know, this sounds like my primary school register. It's all the Sikh names. They feel really familiar. I guess it makes me feel like a lot of British Empire does in that it's a beautiful thing that enough British people cared to build this, but at the same time, there were a load of Imperial Brits who didn't give a fuck. In Joe Lysett versus the oil giant, the comedian holds one of the world's most powerful companies to account as he investigates greenwashing in his own inimitable style. I'm in, I'm in. They said, please take your plant with you, but I felt like that was just them being polite. If you can give it to Ben Van Burden, thank you. I feel like I should tweet Shell just to let them know that I've been. Hi, Shell. Just dropped off a houseplant to your London HQ. I wondered if it's true you're exploring for new oil, even though the IEA say we don't need any new oil fields. XOXO. The O is a hug, isn't it? Yeah, I'll give Shell a hug. Filmmaker Jamie O'Leary and blind comedian Jamie McDonald hit the road in blind ambition. Seeking out the work of blind artists, they explore how creatives deal with sight loss. So we're going to meet Ian Traherne, who's a blind photographer. Does he do weddings? I'm really interested to see how he does it, because any decent shot of a blind guy would take would be, it'd have to be an accident. So we're going to ask Ian to do, um, you, know, the, you know, the production skills that you have for the newspapers and the listings and stuff. We're going to get Ian to do that, that for us today as well. You're paying him? No, I think it's just a good opportunity for him to uh, show us what he does. You're a chancing bastard. <laughs> no, <a bit. laughs> Ellie Simmons, a world without dwarfism, sees the Paralympian swimmer research controversial new drugs that some argue could bring an end to dwarfism. How are you feeling? Yeah, a bit uncomfortable. All these big businessmen all raising funds to cure me, people like me. It's, it's yeah, it's quite. What do you think they should be giving their money towards? To cure in um, worldwide poverty, climate change, cancer, brain tumours, heart problems, disability awareness in all different countries, the acceptance of different people, not about making someone taller. Now, this is an amazing shortlist of varied and versatile presenters, but the recipient of this award tackled their subject in a very clever way. It was totally engaging while being completely authentic and not a little bit irrelevant. The Grierson Award for the Disney Plus Best Documentary Presenter goes to Jamie McDonald and Jamie O'Leary for Blind Ambition. <laughs>
Does anyone want to board? I've got it. So thank you. <laughs> well, we really didn't see that coming, so it's only for my speech here. <laughs> no, this, uh, this is just paper paper. Thank you so much. Uh, really didn't see that coming. And um, Jamie, I was brilliant at casting you as my uh, colleague to go. <laughs> so um, over to you, sir. It's just, just yeah. Oh, it's three times. Right, what, I was speaking to this? Yeah. <laughs> Man, you could have told me I would have not sat in the middle of the fucking row. <laughs> <laughs> uh, ja sorry, Jamie. Jamie made this documentary about um, disabled people triumphing uh, with their adversities and, and trying, um, try, not triumphing over them. So it's, a, it's an absolute honour for that to be recognised and to the, um, the Daily Mail critic called it unwatchable drivel. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to take this to Hull. Thank you. Thank you. All right, I'm up because if I did it when I'm glad it went to another disabled comedian. <laughs> <laughs> She's happy now. She's happy now. Now, our next award is the Best Student Documentary, which is supported by our headline sponsor, All Three Media. <coughs> Excuse oh. me. No, cheeky little cough. Um, so, please welcome the Chief Operating Officer, John Wagner, and joining him, hot from his latest new cast, it's Adam Fleming. And here are the nominations. Daughters of the Sea interrogates what the ocean means to a group of daring fisherwomen who work along the Atlantic coastline of northern Spain. Bueno, mucha gente no no sabe cómo se coge el percebe y cuando salen imágenes están los hombres. Asocian la dureza del medio con el que las mujeres no lo pueden llevar a cabo para nada. Hay muchísimas mujeres percebeiras. Mi nombre es Tommy, soy percebeira en las Rías Baixas en Galicia. La realidad es que ahora mismo nosotros, por tierra, somos mayoría de mujeres. A filmmaker turns his lens on his mother and uncle in ordinary life, observing a unique bond that stems from their difficult childhood. After their mother passed and their dad had abandoned them, and he's currently we were placed in the foster care and were given a new family by Una and George. Despite this new love and family, I get the impression that they feel like there's still a unique connection between the two of them, that no one will ever really understand. Four survivors of human trafficking tell their stories in Traded, detailing how they were sold into prostitution, how they escaped, and how they overcame the stigma of being a sex worker. <laughs> Following an American-Korean couple who open a diner in South Korea, 10 by 10 immerses us in their lives as they adapt to a newfound fame. See, this is so funny. On camera, he looks shy, right? On camera, he looks shy. But he loves the attention. He loves this attention. He eats it up. Me, on camera, I don't care. I'm just like, blah, blah, blah. I hate it. I hate this crap. When the phone rings, my stomach starts hurting. So he loves 
this attention. Well, so, come here. He loves this attention, and I, no. I hate it. No, I don't. Oh, like yes, it. You do. No. yes, you do. Yes, you do. You don't feel like I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Because do you know who? My hometown. Listen. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. But when that's you love all the attention. No. Oh, I, yes. yes. No, me too. I hate it. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I hate the attention. Right, before we reveal the winning film, the judges wanted to highly commend Daughters of the Sea by Laura Esteban for her craft and storytelling in a professionally executed film. So well done, Laura. The winning film charts a pivotal time in the life of the complex central character. The filmmaker did a fantastic job of settling into an idiosyncratic world to make this a compelling and intimate story. John, please tell us who's getting the award. The Grierson Award for the All Three Media Best Student Documentary goes to 10 by 10. Baby Moses, um, <clears throat> I didn't prepare anything because I didn't think I was going to win. Um, everything went wrong today. Um, there's like a huge run in my stockings and, <laughs> and my hair is really frizzy, um, which you don't care anything about. Um, this is not the documentary I went to South Korea to make with my sister, uh, as many of us... <laughs> As many of us documentary filmmakers and humans around the world learned uh, the last couple of years, the pandemic uh, changes plans for us, uh, doesn't really inform us. Um, I went to South Korea, ended up there eight weeks later. Um, I was filming a completely different subject, but because of the pandemic, I missed my shot. I had nothing, nothing to film. But I just so happened to be there when my sister's TV show was premiering for the first time, and I just picked up the camera and rolled with it. And, Sometimes you just have to tell the stories that want to be told. And um, I'm extremely grateful for my sister and brother-in-law letting me follow them around incessantly with a camera all summer. Hyungbo uh, gomasmida. And um, thank you to the Granada Center at the University of Manchester, especially Angela Torreson, whose guidance and um, handling of my own chaos certainly made this film possible. So thank you very much for this honor. Thank you. I'm glad, and I hope you are too. Are you still with us? Yeah. And I haven't worked myself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I just, you know, I, I, I dodged choking in front of a room full of people. It's fantastic. No, no, you didn't, everyone. No. <laughs> <laughs> And so, to the Grayson Hero of the Year, sponsored by the Talent Manager. Now, this award honours an individual who has made a positive, a meaningful impact within, within the documentary industry. <laughs> oh, my God. Is, is that me? <laughs> No, no, Rosie, we've been through this. You are definitely not going to win an award tonight. What? I'm sorry, it's true. What? I'm disabled. <laughs> <laughs> and I always win some awards. Sorry. Not tonight. <laughs> you're disabled, you're an inspiration, <laughs> but you're not winning tonight. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> so tell us more. Please welcome on stage Rogan Productions co-founder Salita Rogan and the talent managers Sarah Lee. Good evening, everyone. It gives me great pleasure to have this opportunity to talk about this year's Grizz and Hero, Claire Richards. I have worked alongside Claire and the We Are Dot Women team for over two years now, and watching the group evolve into a real industry force for good has been heartening and humbling. Claire, being an established director, is a person that understands the needs of the people for which she advocates inside and out. And she is exceptional at listening and really listening to those with different experiences and perspectives and being mindful of all that she hears when deciding on how she's going to push things forward. Continuously motivating and leading a team of women to voluntarily commit their time in the interests of industry advancement can definitely have its challenges, but she admirably remains on focus. Her quiet but unwavering drive to improve behind-the-camera representation for women has resulted in a remarkable amount of achievement over the past five years. It is testament to her kind and generous nature, but her sharp focus that has earned her the respect and admiration of the group, but also many across the industry. From our industry peers, she has pushed for engagement and accountability but teamed it with empathy and humility in a way that has encouraged dozens of entities, large and small, to open their minds and doors to more women being engaged on creative projects as directors. In the last 12 months under Claire's leadership, the We Are Dot Women group has won the support and commitment of nearly 70 production companies and departments of varying size and structure to aim for 50% of their annual factual output to be directed by women. Claire has been at the forefront of all of the group activity, and she has achieved this whilst also working as a director. We are incredibly lucky to have Claire within our industry, and I'm exceptionally lucky to count her as a personal friend. Claire, many congratulations, very well deserved. It's my great pleasure to present the talent manager, Gris and Hero of the Year Award to Claire Richards. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much for the recognition. Thank you very much for the acknowledgement for We Are Dot Women. The work that we've been doing over the last few years has just snowballed, and there are lots of people who have been standing by me that I've relied on that I, I want to thank. Jane Merkin, um, Marina Parker, <laughs> Mimi Adjibede, Salita Rogan, Sean Guerra, Abby Mowbray, Rachel Tracy, Rebecca Burrell, Joe Pritchard, Kat McShane. There are lots, there are lots, and I, I don't want to lose you by continuing to name them, but um, there have been a lot of women by my side, so I'm very grateful. But the thanks also extends to so many people in this room. We've been talking about inclusion and diversity for decades, but it rarely um, translates to, to much more than talk in, until recently. Um, firstly, thank you to all the men who filled out the survey. Without your honesty, we wouldn't have had the benchmark of your career to compare our progress to. Thank you to all the production companies and broadcasters who've committed to the pledge for equal representation for women directors and for pledging to sharing your stats. We've been overwhelmed and really grateful for the response. Um, I want to make sure that you know that we will treat those stats with care and we will use them to gain insights so that we can further chart progress. Um, thank you to everyone in this room who in your own way, um, in this room and beyond who in your own, right, uh, your own way have always been thinking about um, hiring differently, who you're hiring, how you're hiring, why you're hiring, um, and that goes beyond gender too. Um, because of course when the lens through which our, the stories that we make are told are as are told by people who are as varied and inclusive as possible, then surely we all make better programs and we, our craft continues to progress. 
Um, one last thing, we're really open to working with new partners, so please, please come and talk to us. And if you want to come to the Christmas party, you're also very welcome. <laughs> Cheers. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You can wear your new glasses. <laughs> yeah. And the next award is for the best science documentary sponsored by the Open University. Please welcome on their behalf Dr. Eric Borgstrom and wildlife presenter Dan O'Neill. And yeah, you know the drill now. <laughs> Let's have a look at the nomination. <laughs> Following four people with dementia over the course of two years, Dementia and Us captures the ups and downs of life with a changing brain. So what we've created here is a little task to test whether you do actually struggle more with numbers than you okay. do with letters. Okay? That's interesting. I don't want you to read the words. I'd like you to spell them. OK, are you ready to start? Yeah. Perfect. Four. Start. Sorry. That's OK. No, that's OK. <laughs> that's perfect. Just like that. Four, seven, oh, six, five, Seven, yeah, that's it. W A E D. Neutrino, hunting the ghost particle, meets the scientists searching for a mysterious new particle that's almost impossible to detect, but could transform our understanding of the universe. I think we're getting a lot closer. Neutrino physicists are incredibly patient. It takes a long time for us to collect our data, and we really want to be sure in what we're seeing before we potentially make a very important discovery. We're trying to answer some of the biggest questions in physics. And I think it's really unique that neutrinos may hold all the answers. Using intimate testimony from key people affected by HIV, Positive explores our changing relationship with HIV and AIDS over the past 40 years. <laughs> Up until then, there have been raids on gay pubs. When the police came in, they were wearing marigold gloves to protect themselves from the HIV virus. When she shook their hands, she sent a signal across the world. If I'm not a threat, neither are you. It was a fucking rule changer. A year in the ice, the Arctic drift, follows a pioneering scientific expedition deep into the Arctic Circle, where they investigate the epicenter of climate change and get close up with some of the local residents. Now that we're close to the ice edge, there are more seals. And where there are seals, there are also a lot of polar bears. And they're constantly showing up. Hey! Every day, we prepare that we're out there. But there's a very, very good chance that we won't be able to complete today's work. The final four films in this category were all exceptional, but we were genuinely blown away by the ambition, expertise, and logistical undertaking of one particular production. This is an epic story of the global scientific community coming together in a pioneering expedition to advance the science of the most critical topic of our time. Erica, please let us know who the award goes to. The Grierson Award for the Open University Best Science Documentary goes to a Year in the Ice, the Arctic Drift.
thank you. I can't believe it. <laughs> this is, uh, we're a tiny part of a massive team uh, that, uh, that put together this documentary. And, um, uh, but the big, it really goes to the scientists and crew that spent a year locked into the drifting ice, drifting close to the North Pole. Uh, half of their time spent in complete darkness um, and dealing with visitors like the polar bears here that you can see, managed to eat one of our cameras. Um, so this really is uh, for them and their efforts. Um, it's great we've got the um, Best Science Documentary Award because really at the heart of this all, it was, it was great to tell a story that was all about adventure and expedition, but at the heart of it is the importance of science. 37 different nations got together, uh, put aside cultural and language, uh, political differences uh, to go out there uh, to bring back information about this uh, incredibly hard to reach, challenging place of which we know very little still uh, to help us make the best decisions going forward. So here's to them. Thank you very much. It's the best cinema documentary supported by the BFI Doc Society Fund. And representing them tonight is Shanida Scotland and multi award winning filmmaker Asif Kapardia. <laughs> what was his favourite bit? To do now. Oh, I know. Yeah. Shall we see the nomination? <laughs> yes. The first wave spotlights the everyday heroes working in one New York hospital as they come together to battle the COVID 19 virus during the early months of the pandemic. Wait, stop. I have a pulse. Uh, I have a pulse right here. Pulse, 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 pulse. This is the problem. It's new. That is the worst thing in medicine. We are taught pattern recognition. And as of right now, there's no clear pattern. The Reason I Jump offers intimate portraits of young people from across the globe living with non-verbal autism. I react physically to feelings of sadness and happiness. So, when something happens that affects me emotionally, my body seizes up as if struck by lightning. But when I'm jumping, it's as if I'm shaking loose the ropes that are tying me down. Summer of Soul celebrates the legendary 1969 Harlem Cultural Festival, which promoted black pride at a crucial moment in American history. I was a little kid. I remember being with my family, walking around the park, and as far as I could see, it was just black people. This was the first time I'd ever seen so many of us it was incredible. Families, fathers, mothers, kids running around. I was one of those kids. Navalny details the often unbelievable reality of life for one of Putin's rivals. If you want to kill someone, just shoot him. Jesus Christ, like real Alexei. It's impossible to believe it. It's kind of stupid. The, the whole idea of poisoning with a chemical weapon. What the f***? This is why this is so smart. Because even reasonable people, they refuse to believe like, what? Come on, poisoned? Seriously? Just say congrats to all of the nominees. Um, so the award goes to a powerful and transporting documentary by debut director, 
This acclaimed film combines breathtaking archive and touching personal stories to create an important cultural artifact. Rather, Shanida, please tell us the winner. Of course. So the winner tonight of the Grierson Award for Best Cinema Documentary is Summer of Soul. <laughs> Unfortunately, Amir Questlove Thompson Quest isn't able to be here this evening, but of course we'll make sure um, that he receives his award and he has sent us a message. Hello there. Um, just want to say thank you uh, to the folks at Grierson for this prestigious award um, on behalf of my partners at Summer of Soul, all of our producers, um, and all the music acts that performed at the festival. We thank you very much uh, for bestowing us the honor of um, something that was historically lost for the last 50 years. And, um, you know, it's been an amazing year, <laughs> a really amazing year. Um, just the end of the spread joy to people and to share this story, this beautiful story. And I thank you very much for this honor. All right. I'm going to go to New York to give it to him. They're off to New York no, to give it to them. No, maybe I should give it to him. Yeah, you want to go to New York? Yeah, but I'll keep the award. <laughs> You're not having one. Oh, you can't no. have one. I'm sorry, you can't have one. <laughs> Let's move on to our next award. Because next up is the award for Best History Documentary. And to present it, please welcome Bethany Hughes. <laughs> I'm going to do it this time, oh. also. Yeah, shut your trap. Let's have a look at the nominations. <laughs> the decade the rich won chronicles the years after the 2008 financial crash and interrogates the decisions made by those in financial and political power. They gave us these hats. These hats here. Stand in the front. Go big or go home. And the, the idea behind this is, if you're willing to take a bet in $1 million, take it in $10 million. If you, bet, if you back yourself for $1 million, do it in 10. Telling us all, like, take way more risk. And um, I couldn't believe it, right? Okay. Because this is only two years after we, the bank, basically, brought the world economy to its knees by taking too much risk. The shocking story of one Irish mother and baby home where hundreds of children disappeared. The Missing Children follows the women who doggedly pieced together the evidence to bring the scandal to light. The county council, nobody would help me. So I just thought of the registration office in Galway. I said, they would have the deaths. I remember the girl called me and she said, do you really want to buy all those death certs? I said, I need them. She said, there's hundreds and hundreds of children who died in the Joom home. She came back with a staggering number. She said, between the dates you gave me, there are 796 I've counted. There's no dispute. It says on the death search, died in the children's home in Chu. Looking back at self-recorded videos from the first anniversary of 9-11, Memory Box, Echoes of 9-11, is a personal reflection on life and loss 20 years after the tragedy. One day, I was cleaning out the, the family car. I apparently didn't do that very often because I found a little notepad under one of the seats and it was Shelley's notepad and, and it had a bunch of, you know, grocery list things like that, but it also had uh, some words that she wrote down and they were, we have only a finite number of days on this earth make them extraordinary, and fill them with passion. 
harnessing powerful personal testimony, Uprising details the events of the New Cross Fire of 1981, which left 13 black teenagers dead and a community demanding justice. The heat from the smoke is so intense. I can remember feeling like I'm being pushed, you know, like we're all trying to fight to get to, to this one window. I'm only 11 and I remember thinking that I haven't even lived my life, do you know what I mean? I've not even lived my life and now this is it, do you know what I mean? Hello, beautiful people, what an amazing night. Um, as you can see, the nominations were shocking and salient and inspiring and incredibly powerful. Uh, so incredibly powerful, in fact, that the judges found it hard to choose. And so to start, we have a highly recommended commendation mention from the judges for Memory Box, Echoes of 9-11. Um, they praised its impressive casting, its beautiful editing, and they thought it was profoundly affecting. Um, and now for the award itself. Faced with a shocking cover-up, the judges considered these filmmakers were unflinching as they uncovered the truth of a devastating moment in history. Their skillful and touching storytelling is an inspiration for all documentary filmmakers, so for all of you here. So the Grierson for the best history documentary goes to The Missing Children. a bit. Um, thank you so much for this award and to a brilliant team who really supported me to make this film. Um, it took three years to make the film so some of the team were with me from the very beginning and some came on board and were just incredible at bringing it all together. Um, so it's a story about um, the Chewing Mother and Baby Home where um, women who were pregnant and weren't married had to give up their children and um, it was then discovered that 796 children died there and significant quantities of remains were found in a sewage tank at the site of the home. So it was a deeply shocking story but also lifted a lid on a much, much bigger scandal of a whole network of institutions around Ireland where children were neglected and also thousands were um, adopted, um, trafficked to America, to the UK, um, and also adopted within Ireland. Um, so it's a story that was shrouded in secrecy for decades, really. Um, but it's really important that this story isn't just history, um, because there are thousands and thousands of survivors now and family members who are still um, seeking justice and truth. Um, they want to find out who their families are and where their brothers and sisters are. Um, did they survive? Were they adopted? Uh, um, or where they're buried? So we want to dedicate this award to the survivors and the family members and um, also to the Chewham babies who died. And we're really honoured to have with us Teresa O'Sullivan, who is a survivor of the Chewham Mother and Baby Institution, and really want Teresa to say a few words, because she spoke so beautifully and powerfully in our documentary, which was also the first time she'd ever been filmed. I am absolutely in awe and I'm blown away right now. Um, it is an absolute privilege to be here. And there is just, I have a few words written down here that I hope will capture uh, what I feel in my heart 
right now. I have down, it was a privilege to take part in the documentary. The many contributors from all survivors, from everyone that was taking part, it is an absolute honor to be working with Tanya and her excellent, excellent team. One of the strong things that stands out for me is that they met us all with a huge sense of empathy and integrity. They listened to our truth of what we wanted everybody to know. We spoke of our trauma. We spoke of the not knowing what our identity was. We spoke of the 796 beautiful babies that never got a chance over the ground. They're underground. It is our job going forward in the future, in education, in justice, to make sure that they become overground. It is extremely important that we do this. The whole experience has been a validation of our truth, and we really, really want to thank everybody involved for making this real for us and to tell us that we matter and ye are listening. Thank you. to our best natural history or environmental documentary sponsored by Discovery and presenting the award on their behalf is scientist and comedian Ella al Shahi Shah no wait yeah. <laughs> is scientist and comedian very well pronounced by me Ella al Shamahi <laughs> She hurt herself. <laughs> I had flashbacks to my own time at school then. I was like, oh no, I'm doing it, I'm doing it. We got there. We got there in we the end. We got right? there. Oh, what? What shall we do now? Oh, oh, oh. Oh. Are you going to tell us? Yeah. 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 I'll tell you what we're gonna what they do now. Gonna... <laughs> Come on, mate. Come on the edge of my seat. <laughs> oh my god, they kick us. Um we're gonna look at the domination. The Green Planet, Tropical Worlds, reveals the many hidden secrets of the plants and animals living in tropical rainforests. This plant produces its flowers at night. They open about six o'clock, and each blossom only lasts that night. It opens for about seven hours, and then it dies. But during that time, it provides food for one particular animal, a bat. And here it is. Filmed over one of the hottest years ever recorded, life at 50 degrees captures the reality for those living in these extreme temperatures. Sahara, the desert, there are the herbs. The people here, there is no pluie, there is nothing at all. There is only the misery. And the desert, there is no herbs. The animals are really minimized here. There is no nothing. Becoming Cousteau, 
is a deep dive into the underwater world of explorer and inventor turned conservationist Jacques Cousteau. Mais je voulais pas de JO, je voulais être tout à fait indépendant. Et par le père de ma femme, j'ai rencontré un ingénieur, Émile Gagnant, qui avait mis au point un détendeur destiné à alimenter les moteurs des voitures automobiles. J'ai donc emprunté un père, je l'ai monté sur des bouteilles d'air. Et dans la Marne, j'ai commencé les essais. In my garden of a thousand bees, one wildlife filmmaker makes the most of lockdown by getting up close and personal with the insects in his own backyard. He gets his hairy legs out and he starts waving them around, but in real time, it's like about, you know, it's much faster than that. In slow motion, you can see the tufts on his hairy legs. He is gently, three times he brushes them on the female's antenna, then three times he brushes them on the female's antenna. It took me a month to discover what he actually does with those hairy legs during sex. So aside from having a surname which hurts a lot of people, um, I was also a judge in this category and filmmakers, you really made our, jobs, our job incredibly tough. So much so that before I tell you who the award goes to, we'd like to highly commend a profoundly beautiful film which celebrated the natural world in a charming and unexpected way. That film is My Garden of a Thousand Bees. I honestly cried at the end of that film. If you haven't seen it, please do. The winning film now was exemplary. Stunning visuals, outstanding camera work, and exceptional storytelling. The award for the Discovery Natural History, let me say that again, the award for the Discovery Best Natural History or Environmental docu Documentary is The Green Planet, Tropical World. <laughs> There can't be many times that Grierson's given an award to a program about plants, but we were very, very lucky. We feel very lucky to have been able to make this series. Um, plants are an extraordinary part of the natural world, which nobody really pays any attention to. But we spent a lot of time filming plants, talking to plants, loving plants, and we felt at the end of this that everybody should love plants, because probably they're the one things that's going to save us. The plant world is an extraordinary world. We'd like to thank two, two things. We'd love to thank the BBC for allowing us to put a series about plants on primetime television on a Sunday night so that it could be watched by millions and millions of people. And also Sir David Attenborough, who in his 93rd and 94th year allowed us to take him all around the world from the tropics to the... to the Arctic Circle, um, and not only allowed us, but infused us and pushed us to do ever more and more extraordinary stories. And as you saw from that clip, he is Sir Francis of Assisi. He stands there, and animals just arrive. <laughs> um, it was a great pleasure to do it with him. I've worked with him for 30 years, but I, all I remember on this series, particularly when we were up in that Arctic Circle, is please do not let me go down in history as the man who froze David Attenborough to death. <laughs> 
I'm pleased to say we didn't. And he is not here tonight because he's still recovering from being attacked by that cactus. But on behalf of all of us, thank you so much, Grierson's, and please, all love plants. I bet you kill all of yours. <laughs> I do. Yeah. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> Overwatered. Yeah. Overwatered. I, I do it a little bit so much. I kill him with love. Exactly. And water. And water. <laughs> exactly. Overloved. Now, our next award is for Best Documentary Short, sponsored by Fullwell73. And to announce this year's recipient, please welcome Fullwell73's Leo Perlman and BBC Radio 2's Richie Anderson. Hey, no, no, no. no. All right, you do. Here are the nominations. Interweaving animation with recent news footage, Freedom Swimmer cleverly parallels two stories, a grandfather's perilous escape from China and a granddaughter fleeing her home in Hong Kong. Nsenene illuminates the twilight world of Uganda's grasshopper hunters as they set their traps hoping for a bumper harvest of a local delicacy. The Bay View is a hotel on the northeast coast of Scotland, run by a mother and son duo that offers respite to fishermen from all over the world. They look at you and they say, oh, there she is. Mm. You know, Mayor. I don't know, I don't know if it's that that makes me giggle to myself. They'll come in and say to you, oh, we're going to take the sailors upstairs. Yeah. You know. So and they're that, welcome to. You know, is that kind of, I wouldn't know how to run that kind of business. Well, you're doing it now. Yeah, but how? Just helping them go to the room? Or? Yeah, that's part of it. And making them feel welcome. Yeah. On the outskirts of Kabul, a young family live in a displacement camp. Three Songs for Benazir follows a young Afghan man as he tries to pursue his dream of joining the National Army. Well, first and foremost, I just want to say thank you so much for having us this evening. It's been incredible and inspirational. And secondly, I just want to show some love to our hosts. AJ and Rosie not only did a stellar job looking fabulous over there as well. Right now, down to business. So highly commended in this category is a film that is told like a thriller 
right through to the knockout ending. That film is Freedom Swimmer. Yeah. But the award goes to a film that charts a story of one man's personal struggle. Moving and sad with an entirely unpredictable end. It was skillfully crafted and shot with integrity. I'm going to hand over to Leo, who's going to reveal the winner. The Grierson Award for the Fullwell 73 Best Documentary Short goes to Three Songs for Benazir. <laughs> Let's hear from directors Elizabeth and Gilstein and Mirai. love and loyalty can look like, um, especially when neither is easy and in the face of seemingly insurmountable obstacles. Thank you for our team, to Netflix, and to all of you. Thank you. Thank you. And of course they're not here tonight, so we'll make sure they receive their award. And thank you so much for having us. Thank you. Thank you. Right then. Very good. Very good. Is it because they complimented us? <laughs> yeah. 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 So the BBC Grace and Trustees Award is always a highlight of the evening where we celebrate someone truly special and this year is no exception. Oh! No, no. <laughs> <laughs> to tell us more about this year's recipient, please welcome ITV's controller of current affairs, Tom Giles. Thank you. <clears throat> it's an honor to be asked to say a few words for the Grierson Trust celebration of someone that was, to me and others, a life-affirming force and inspiration. Even now, after he's gone, he still is. In fact, it's hard to believe Roger's not actually here tonight, because obviously he'd have loved it. And no doubt he'd be pitching away about some new project before, during, and after he left this stage. But a few words aren't really going to cover Roger's remarkable life of many parts. Theatre director and impresario, television drama director, author, criminologist, professor of media, campaigner for social justice, founding board member of Channel 4, Fellow of the Royal Institute of British Architects, redesigner of a London bus map, <laughs> patron of so many charities, sponsor of so much good work, and a spark to so many new talents, a polymath, a Renaissance man, and in between all that, somehow, he managed to be one of the most significant and transformative documentary makers of our time. Eight years ago at BAFTA, Roger set out what he called a manifesto for documentaries. He called them islands of evidence and tools for change in a sea of noise. He asked for them to be given time to flourish, given the room to take risks, the ability to try new talent, and call for us all to trust in the viewer's need for what good documentaries could do. And you only have to look at his record to see how he lived by that. His classic fly-on-the-wall series, Police, gave us the landmark episode, A Complaint of Rape. And I can still remember the fury that created back in 1982 when, when I was still at school. And even now, 40 years on, its subject matter, the police treatment of rape victims, remains as searingly topical as ever. Then there was the inspiring Felton Sings in collaboration with Brian Hill and the poet Simon Armitage. His groundbreaking thalidomide film, one of them is Brett, and of course his many forensic documentary insights into our institutions, from Great Ormond Street Hospital and the European Commission in Brussels to the Communist Party of Great Britain, and also into all aspects of the system that's entrusted to care for our most vulnerable children. All of these sought in their different ways to throw light onto darkness, even to make the world a little better 
which often they actually did. My own memories are of his warmth, his passion, and his sheer tenacity. Roger was rightly no great respecter of diaries or people's gatekeepers, in fact, of anything that came between him and getting a passion project made. But I do remember as Panorama editor being a little shocked to find in him my office out of the blue, as I'd never actually met him before, and he'd rather wandered in on a sweeping tour of the BBC building, as, as he was prone to do. But he was charming. He showed me a tape of rushes for a film he'd been developing. The scenes were all about Connor, a kid in the care system losing all control and attacking his social worker's car after being denied a trip to see his mum. It was an amazing raw sequence and a touching story of a sympathetic but tragic kid. And Roger cared so much about him and the film that we actually took it straight away to BBC One and it became an hour-long nine o'clock doc, Kids in Care. And actually the scene he showed me that day is briefly in the short film that we're about to see. Anyway, two weeks later, I was surprised again when he turned up with more ideas. Only this time I found out he was in the diary. Again, and again, and again. So after he'd gone, I asked, how come Roger's in the diary? And it turned out that on his way out the first time, he'd gone over and assured my assistant that it had all been okay with me for him to be booked in for sessions for his updates every two or three weeks. <laughs> yes, that was Roger. But I've never felt anything other than gratitude for the films he went on to make for me, as he did for so many others. In fact, the team that worked together on that film, Kids in Care, are currently making what was perhaps Roger's final commission to be broadcast next year. And yes, this one's also about the police. And it's also about the rights of vulnerable women and those fighting with the criminal justice system to gain proper protection. Because right up to the very end, even at the grand old age of 85, he was still the same Roger, still bursting with ideas and still caring about what we do and the people we can help. So now, so now let's hear from some of Roger's friends and colleagues. Well-made documentaries are islands of evidence in, and tools for change in a sea of noise. Roger believed that documentaries could change the world. Brett was born without arms because when his mother was pregnant, she was given thalidomide. What is it like to grow up with the state as a parent? All of Roger's films were predicated on getting extraordinary, unprecedented access. <laughs> the first film of Roger's I saw was A Complaint of Rape. So the three of them were there, were they? Upstairs. And it was one of those odd moments where I just couldn't believe it. Like, my jaw genuinely like, hit the floor. I will agree that maybe you've had sex this afternoon. And it's not with your boyfriend. But I'll go as far as to say, I think that you've been a willing party to it. We made 20 films together. We were trying to make films where the institutions would be explained. He had a real impact on public policy, whether it was for rape or the criminal justice system. You know, Roger did more than anyone I know that actually had an impact on wider society. All access films <laughs> in the UK, I think, owe a debt of gratitude. Great Ormond Street Children's Hospital has helped develop cures for many conditions which just a few years ago were untreatable. A lot of documentaries come in and show what you do, but very few get over why you do it. Roger's team had got that over. And you're basically signing a contract with uncertainty. We don't know what's going to happen and neither can you. Roger and his team were really good at it. Every morning, Roger would come in with hundreds of ideas. He would have been to the gym, had a breakfast meeting, and would have little bits of paper with people's telephone numbers, leads, insights. I never got on an aeroplane with Roger where he didn't know somebody on flight. Never. There was always someone in his phone who could help with an idea. He relentlessly sold programs and ideas to me day and night. I was on speed dial for him. He would just constantly be pitching. He could pitch to you on the street, on the tube at any moment. I had to make a three-part series or a five-part series, or possibly Roger should take over 
all of Channel 4's output himself. Hello, Polly! Roger had access to anyone, but he put a lot of time into giving people a chance, spotting people he thought were real talent. He couldn't do enough for you and always wanted to help. And whether that was personal life or work life, whatever it was, he was always looking for gaps that he could help fill. I think Roger had a massive influence over our industry in ways that we probably don't quite realise. I don't really think I'll ever meet anyone like Roger again. I hope I'm wrong, but I don't think I will. I think he was really special. Documentaries are alive and well. Long live documentaries. Thank you for listening. to his wife Susan who must know better than any of us all of the work he did and of course all of those brilliant ideas. It's my great pleasure to invite Susan Richards to the stage to collect the award on behalf of her late husband, that titan of documentary filmmaking, Roger Grafe. That really does bring him back. My many-dimensional husband. He was the love of my life. He was a delight. And he was my best companion. But you know, he wasn't always easy to live with. <laughs> As you can imagine, he took up a lot of space. I'll give you an example. There was one trip only that he joined me in Russia. We were bound for the heart of Russia, Siberia, the heart of the virgin forests. For me, it was a very precious trip for the research I was doing for a book. Roger didn't actually have a role, um, and he didn't have the language and he certainly didn't like the interpreter. So he turned to me. That trip nearly cost us our marriage. <laughs> Thank you, Grierson. From Roger. We're back again. I had the way. Yes. <laughs> and now for the best single documentary, Domestic, which crowns the best contemporary British storytelling. And it's sponsored by Envy, where tonight's clip packages were created. So please give an extra warm welcome to Envy's Nicola Whitehead and journalist and presenter, Lucrezia Millerini. It's my favourite bit. Let's have a look at the nomination. <laughs> An intimate examination of what it means to be disabled. A space in time follows one family's struggle to adjust to life with Duchenne muscular dystrophy, a fatal muscle wasting disease. And they ask me from the professional point of view what equipment and how the building should look like to improve the quality of life for Theodore and Oscar in the future. I think the best way to show them was to walk along the Christophers and show accessible bathroom, accessible rooms with hoists. It was quite important for Clara and Nick to see how boys' life might look like in the next 10 or 15 years. 
I remember Clara one moment burst in tears because she didn't really realize the boys will be fully dependent on hoist because they're not going to be able to walk. The Last Mountain tells the story of a family who lived and were prepared to die for the love of scaling the icy heights of the world's highest peaks. Danger is very personal to everybody. Yes! Pushing your own personal limits is where that's going for longer or higher or faster or harder. But never fighting against the mountain because you can't. Because they'll always win in the end. Mothers of the Revolution celebrates the women of Greenham Common who instigated one of the longest protests in history. When you see hundreds of police coming towards you, that was the first time and I was really scared. Grenfell, The Untold Story, weaves interviews with unseen footage filmed in the years leading up to the devastating fire to create a powerful record of a community working together. Just an indication of people. Marcio phoned me. He was in hospital, could hardly speak. His family were in induced comas. His wife had lost, the baby was gone. Um, he phoned me to see if I was okay. Yeah, that's the way we were. Good evening, everyone. I just want to say congratulations to all the nominees tonight. I've got a very, very long list of documentaries that I need to catch up on now. But for this category, the four finalists all had great characters, great storytelling, and are the kind of films that make us think. The judges describe the film as a definitive record of this tragic moment in our history. The quality of the filmmaking and its careful construction brought justice to this heartbreaking story. So Nicola, please tell us who the award goes to. The Grierson for the NB Best Single Documentary, Domestic, goes to Grenfell, The Untold Story. day for the um, people of North Kensington. It's the day that um, the Grenfell Inquiry has finally closed. Um, and as well as obviously saying thank you to Channel 4, to BBC Studios, to Shaminda Nahal and Amy Flanagan, who are also really important to this film, we want to use this moment just to platform the words of Grenfell United, who today said, we continue to live our lives knowing the evidence has been uncovered. And yet there's no change. No accountability, no charges. We now have to put our faith into a justice system that protects the powerful, a system that prevents justice. While this system exists, we face the same unachievable battle as the many before us. From Aberfan to Hillsborough, justice has been denied, and Grenfell is no different. I'm going to pass now to Constantine Grass. Constantine was the artist in residence in Grenfell Tower, and this film would not have been possible without him. Thank you. It was 
it's been a very long and difficult journey. Um, I, in 2015, I was an artist in residence in Grenport Tower. Um, I worked on, as a community artist in the area, and it was not really aware of what I was capturing at that time. Um, and uh, I managed to befriend the community, uh, but what I recognised was the diversity, strength, and the, the power of the people in that community, and the fact that their voices were not being heard, not listened to. Um, and, they, and, and I just happened to be there to capture that. Um, and then I had to sit on that for four or five years, that footage that I had, footage, for example, of young eight-year-old Mehdi, who I filmed doing drawings, and who, who described the future of the universe to me in bold colors. Um, people like Sheila, who I recorded in meetings with the, the TMO and the council, describing how she felt that they, it was all about the building, they never thought about the people, it was all about the people. It was all about the building. So that footage I had for a long time, and then it took a long time to trust and befriend and to make contacts with the production team you see behind me, who did an amazing job. They, they really were sensitive and involved, and they became part of the community, and then were able to film the bereaved and survivors and have this really powerful record of what happened, but also to try to show that we still have an outstanding issue of justice and that we're still a long way away from getting justice. Um, it's, today is the day that the, 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 the public inquiry is closing, closing down and we're obviously now waiting for the report and over the coming years we'll see police investigations and hopefully closure and some form of healing for our community. Um, so, Thank you so much to the Grierson trustees for bestowing us this award and we'd really just like to dedicate this to the memory of the 72 people who died at Grenfell Tower. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now it's time for the best documentary series sponsored by Netflix. And to present it, let's welcome director Jenny Popplewell and the filmmaker and presenter Louis Threw. Let's see the nomination. Analyzing the impact of a tragedy 20 years on, 9-11, One Day in America, tells the in-depth story of September the 11th, 2001, through the eyes of witnesses and survivors. And at this extraordinary time in history, those little moments of caring for another were the difference between life and death. Jeremy Kyle's show, Death on Daytime, exposes the culture of bullying and intimidation behind the scenes of the hit show that led to the suicide of a vulnerable contributor. Everyone went in at 10 in the morning because no one knew what was going on. And then it was like, yeah, you were all getting made redundant. As soon as that show ended, proof of it disappears. All our accounts got shut down, everything. Even the signs in our office saying Jeremy Kyle, they took them down within a day. It was like it didn't exist. Genius, a Kanye trilogy, allows glimpses into the life of a controversial hip hop artist. I know my album is gonna be right now. I gotta help other people with their album. <laughs> That's good, Kanye. Did you think of a name for it yet? I should call it, um, I know I'm gonna be straight. I don't know what I'm gonna call it. That's all good. Mom, that term is so old. Well, you said I'm good. I'm good, yeah. <laughs> I'm good. Why? I'm, I don't know. I just, I just want to say, like, I appreciate. I would like to congratulate you on the good job that you did with me. <laughs> <laughs> Uprising analyzes the social and cultural repercussions of the New Cross fire tragedy and how poor policing has affected race relations for generations. 
When people talk about Operation Swamp, SUS, and all of that, what people are failing to understand is the brutality that comes with that. People think it's a, oh, you know, I just want to check your pockets. It wasn't like that. When they stopped you, it was a punch first. <laughs> Well, <clears throat> sorry. All of those are amazing films, um, but there can be only one winner. Filmed over two decades with amazing access, this series is a fascinating story of creativity, persistence, grit, and the nature and perils of genius. Jenny, please tell us who the award goes to. The Grierson for the Netflix Best Documentary Series goes to Genius, a Kanye trilogy. <laughs> comfortable without these shoes on. Um, no, I, I, I want to say real quick that, um, that when I first put the camera on Kanye, you know, I didn't know what I was doing. I was a stand-up comedian from the hood of Chicago, but I had a vision. And 21 years later, the reason why Netflix and Time Magazine and everybody who got behind this project, Chica and Jay Ivey and our editors and everybody, because they realized that this documentary was not about Kanye. It wasn't about me or none of us. It was for the dreamers, and everybody's a genius. And when you follow your passion and your purpose, then you would discover your genius. And everybody in this room are geniuses, so I just wanted to say that, and, and we got a lot of people to thank. I definitely want to thank you. Uh, yeah. um, definitely want to thank my mother and my Auntie Lane and watching from afar right now, but uh, really for their unwavering support and allowing me the opportunity to follow my passions. But a lot of us don't have that support, and that was the reason really for this film. The intention was to be a blueprint to really help people um, figure out how to pursue their dreams and where to start and really have faith in themselves and, and utilize faith to, to really fight through adversity because the world, these, it's, the world doesn't necessarily make it easy for you to come out and win. A lot of people just wake up and they're just trying to survive and figure out where they're going to eat tomorrow. So we really made this film for those people to have some sort of inspiration and be able to follow some sort of blueprint. So um, again, thank you to the Grierson Awards. Thank you uh, to Netflix and Time Studios. But I also want to thank my brothers. There's a line in the film that says, you can get in where you fit in, or you can make room. And oftentimes, those that are around, they, they don't necessarily make room for you and your gift. But my brothers, Cootie and Chike, have always done that. Um, from when Cootie called me 20 years ago about being on a song with Kanye and Jay-Z, to uh, two years ago when he said, we're finally doing Genius and he said he wanted me to be the writer. So I just want to thank my brothers. Uh, these are my brothers, but it's also amazing to be able to build and create together. Such a blessing. So thank y'all. Thank y'all. Well, one more thing, one more thing. I'm sorry to take up y'all's time, but, um, and there's so many people that we really have to thank, but a lot of times in film, especially in documentaries, the editors don't get enough credit. They put in so many hours of work and just want to do a personal thanks to Max Allman and Jason Parker. Thank you. Finally, it's Best Single Documentary International, which recognizes single films on a contemporary issue with an international perspective. 
And to present it, please welcome Georgia Wallace from award sponsors Mol Molinaire and with her from Channel 4 News, it's Fatima Manji. <laughs> Way bad day. One that last time. Was that so? And getting that safe over Oh. <laughs> Let's have a look at the closing nominations. Dying to Divorce illuminates Turkey's gender-based violence crisis by profiling the work of female lawyers, risking it all to help survivors of domestic abuse. O da demiş dünyam başıma yıkıldı. Ben iki sene bekliyordum demiş. Ya ne yalvarmış iki, se ne? iki sene zanned. Bunu da öyle zannediyor. Evet. Öyle. Yani onun için cezasını çekmek zorunda. Çekti. Bu zamana kadar biliyorsun hep böyle indirim veriyorlar e, vesaire vesaire. Biz bu sefer indirim almasın diye uğraşacağız. Documenting Zimbabwe's first election since the removal of Robert Mugabe. President follows opposition leader Nelson Chamisa as he sets out to challenge the dictator's corrupt legacy. Writing with Fire embeds with a team of tireless journalists at India's only newspaper run entirely by women from the lowest caste as they report on the country's biggest issues. An immersive exploration of neurodiversity. The reason I jump offers revealing insights into the experience of young people with non-verbal autism. My eyes are captured by lines and surfaces. Just to get a grip on things, I have to scan my memory to find an experience closest to what's happening now. Good evening, everyone. I know we're getting to that stage of the night where you're getting ready to party, but bear with us because we all know you save the best till last. Now, I was a judge in this category, and it's always lovely when a film gives you an insight into a world you thought you understood, and then you suddenly discovered there was an awful lot more to learn. Packed with brilliant contributors, visually beautiful, and with great sound design, it's a remarkable, moving, and often joyful film. Georgia, do the honors. Thank you, Fatima. The Grayson Award for Molinaire's Best Documentary International goes to the reason I jump.
Thank you so much. Thank you uh, for Grissons. Um, this film began um, with the determination of a 12-year-old boy in a, a Japanese suburb to uh, explain his experiences to a world that both didn't understand him but also had written him off. And his response to that was to write. Now Higashida's book um, is a beautiful act of translation of a nonverbal experience into um, words, words that he uh, painstakingly spells out by pointing to a letterboard. Uh, when I went to see him to talk about the project, uh, he used that same letterboard both to share the you know, excitement about doing the, doing the project, but also his one condition, which was that he didn't want to be filmed. Um, and at the time, that felt uh, maybe not a great start, but um, I think it was a, it was a gift to us because it kind of forced us into making a film that was an equivalent of, of the book rather than a biopic or a, a follow doc. Um, so I know we're not allowed to thank people, but I'd just like to thank all the <laughs> autistic advisors and crew and an uh, amazing bunch of artists that came together uh, in this project, uh, to my producers and those that um, made the film possible. It's, very, it's a really rare opportunity, actually, I think, in documentary to make uh, films like these. This is a, a film that has no plot, uh, there's no celebrities in it, no one's done anything really bad. Um, it doesn't have many words, um, but audiences respond to it, and, and maybe that's a, a sign that we can be bolder about the kinds of things that we make. I certainly learned a lot about filmmaking during it, so thanks. I just, um, I just wanted to say that when we first pitched this about 10 years ago, um, we went to the uh, film arm of a major broadcast and we were told that uh, neurodiversity and disability weren't a, 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 an area of diversity that they were focused on. And the fact that that now feels so shocking is a really positive uh, indication, I think, of, of the direction of travel. And, and, it, and, it, and it does really matter. I mean, for people like our son, Stevie, and my son, Joss, who is nonverbal, autistic, and is, and is in the film, he was the one you saw jumping on the trampoline, um, the more films there are about people who are neurodivergent, which are involved neurodivergent people making those films as well, um, and which, which open up, you know, uh, which show us what, what, a little bit of what it's like to, 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 to be different, the better, because that'll lead to more understanding and more empathy, and we lack empathy. Neurotypical people don't have enough empathy for these people. And that understanding will help make their lives better. So thank you very much for this. Thank you. And that's it. It's Yay! a wrap. <laughs> Well Thank you. Uh, well done, everyone. That is a wrap uh, of the 50th at Grierson Awards. I really hope to see you all here again next year for the 51st. Yeah, do come back, won't you? Congratulations. Congratulations to all of tonight's nominees and recipients. Thanks to our sponsors and partners whose support is vital to the work the Grace Interest does, and for the present and the future of filmmaking. And I want to actually thank you, AJ, for that's the first saying about 90% of the script. <laughs> <laughs> because if it had been 50 50, we would have been there to January. <laughs> so, thank you. Thank you. Um, <laughs> and, and with a free bar calling our names, that's it for us. It really is this time. We'll have to have a risky. 
Thank you and good night. Let's hear it for AJ Odudu and Rosie Jones. Oh, yeah. 